This is a Tibet House member video and is a part of the Force for Good class series, now available at tibethouse.us. in Pakistan, plutonium. So there's no time to life. So that means every moment could be your last. So then you really like, you, you get that will key you up a lot. And you get those two themes together, how precious your human embodiment and Tao liberty opportunity, how you achieved it through your own evolutionary experience from previous lives, you personally, and it's really valuable to you and you're going to lose it and you don't know when. And when you do, it's, where, it's whatever is just in your being at the subtlest level. It's your spiritual gene. It's a really good concept, I think, to think of. That which imprints your deeds of generosity, morality, tolerance, creativity, in, you know, concentration, wisdom, you know, etc., artfulness, determination, wisdom. So that way you do. Then you might get into, well, I want to be in a better class, I want to have a better IQ next life, I want to be with better parents, I want to be with this, that, I want to be in a better realm, better world, better society. Then you get, you, you might, once you turn off interest in this life, then you get interest going in the next life. But then this, mo this deeper thing, you want to turn that off too. Because even if you have a little better circumstance, it's not going to still satisfy you as far as understanding yourself, and understanding the world, so you're not going to necessarily become enlightened in even in that better life. And so therefore, you reflect on the inexorability of evolutionary effects, which means how difficult it is to become more positive, how hard it is. The, the impetus and the habit energy of negative mind states and negative habits of action is so powerful to do something really different and turn that tide and do something really positive, really transcendent, is difficult. So therefore the momentum is to drag yourself down. And then you look in terms of the tenfold path of skillful and unskillful evolutionary action, which I don't have, I'm not going to take time to elaborate because I'm going to run out of time in this effort today. I'm just sort of giving an overview of it all. And then, then the idea that no situation in life, even in the heaven, will really bring me happiness if I don't understand myself. Because as long as I think I'm the one in this distorted way, as in the Four Noble Truths, you know, that sort of self-absolutize myself, then I always be in a, in a upper creek because the universe will be bigger than me. So by thinking over those two things, that life, the egocentric life I really should have written here, and the sufferings of life. So contemplate the inexorability of evolutionary effects and the sufferings of life over and over again, and you will turn off interest in future lives. So that's really good. Then you, you're, it's not that you, it's just, you know, turning off interest doesn't mean you wouldn't try to live a good life this life, and you wouldn't even like to be born in a better neighborhood next life. It doesn't mean that. You would, and you can work at that. It's just that it puts the priority lower. The priority of every moment is to find your true nature, to find out who you are and what you are, to develop the wisdom that Buddha has faith in you that you have, even though you don't have that faith. You don't think that something you understand will actually change you dramatically and bring you true happiness. We don't think that, or we would really be trying to gain that understanding. If we really, like connoisseurs, you know, if we really knew that was the most delicious dish, we would really be focused on that. We would not be down at the, at the steakhouse or the ve ve vegan delicious new restaurant or whatever it is. We would not, that we would still go there maybe either one, but, but would, that would be a lower priority. Our real priority would be the most delicious thing, which is to know what you are. To realize that you're not there as an absolute thing apart from other things. You're like in the flow of interconnectedness with the being. When you know that, apparently, I still myself, I'm not quite, well, I can, I can vouch for some direction in that way. You cheers you up a lot. You have to get cheered up when you're all interconnected with everything. <laughs> because it's a desperate situation. <laughs> you know the true desperation of being interconnected with this mess. So that cheers you up. Because other people have it even worse. They don't even know that. They're sitting there originally thinking that there's something different. 
than what's around them. And they're trying to just hold on to that difference. And of course, that's futile and hopeless, unnecessary stress. But at least you kind of relax and you're part of the, one of the campers in the motley, one of the members of the motley crew. And I, is that the name of a rock group too? Anyway, it's the name of us. So by constant meditation on the not interested in this life, not interested in future life, which means lowering the priority levels of them, your mind will not entertain a moment's wish even for the successes of this life. So you're not, in, and, and again, wish is, you know, it means really that, that's what I really want is to be this and that, you know. You won't get carried away like that. And you will aim for freedom day and night. You realize that's the true bliss. Freedom itself is the true bliss. That's what you'll aim for. And then you experience transcendent renunciation. And when you do, you will be really happy. You're happy. You really will. And that, but the, although that's not nirvana, but that's just a foretaste of nirvana. But you, because you suddenly drop out of a lot of the things you have anxiety about. You have, well, can I get in a, can I get a better place? Can I get a better house? Is my kid going to get into college? Is whatever it is that you get really clutched about, you won't get so clutched. And actually, it's like, can I win this hand of bridge or this hand of poker? And you actually, you'll be better and you can bluff better because you'll be more relaxed and more dropped out. <laughs> so you actually be able to play the game better. Because, you know, if okay, win or lose, you know, you, you won't be so, quite so gripped by these lesser, lesser objectives, is what I'm trying to say. And the minute you do that too, you begin, you, you eventually will, like, if you're a dense person like me, it'll take you 25 years. <laughs> to realize that this transcendence or renunciation actually is where you really forgive yourself, you have compassion for yourself, you decide that you deserve to take a break about whether or not you are succeed in this or that, that your, your intrinsic being, your natural being, as a, I shouldn't say intrinsic, that's a bad no-no word, but your natural being is so precious that you, you are fine whether or not you can do, stand on your head for 30 minutes in your yoga class to show off to the teacher <laughs> or the students, whatever. Even if you can't, you're still very, very precious. See, because you change. And that gives you tremendous relief. And then, then, when you look around you, when you have compassion for yourself, and you're letting yourself off, and you're only putting yourself, putting all your grindstone focus you know, on freedom, on enlightenment, on realizing the nature of reality, there you're still nodded up to get that, and that's all right. Don't pull some fake thing of a misunderstood Zen of thinking, oh, the thing is I shouldn't want to be enlightened, then I'll be enlightened. That's false. The desire for enlightenment is a good desire. It's where all the desire should be focused. The desire for freedom and enlightenment, absolutely. That's where it counteracts the desire that grips you, that's a desire that you only can control yourself and aim it. It's, it will not match because it doesn't come naturally. 